All right. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Brian Mokpunsuk, a customer success manager here at Kativ Technologies, and today we'll be going over 3D sketching in Fusion 360. Fusion 3, uh, 3D sketching just came out in March of 2020 and the Fusion update or release. Um, so if you haven't messed around with the 3D sketching or anything like that before, um, yeah, it just came out in March. So if make sure you to go update your Fusion 360 so you can have uh, this capability. Um, before you were able to, to 3D sketch uh, per se, but you would have to use the move command and move your 2D sketch into a 3D uh, environment. So they made it a lot easier for us uh, ever since March here. And I'll be going into uh, how to use it essentially inside of Fusion 360. It's a lot easier than you would expect, but I, th I think it's worth, definitely worth. So what exactly is 3D sketching? So 3D sketching, as you may be familiar with 2D sketching, uh, will be in not only just the X and Y plane, but we'll also be incorporating the Z plane. So 3D, everyone knows 3D, but uh, you'll be able to more easily uh, draw in the 3D realm rather than be restricted to you know, drawing a 2D sketch, then you create another 2D sketch or an, on another plane and then try to connect those together. It used to be more of a hassle. Uh, it's a lot easier now, like I mentioned, uh, as of March 2020. And who benefits from 3D sketching? So if you're a designer or engineer who creates kind of like bed frames, uh, chassis, like you see there at the bottom left of the screen, uh, you know, wiring even per se, or you can start with a 3D sketch as kind of like your skeleton. And then if you see on the top right there, the bike handlebars, um, you could actually start or create the freeform models from these 3D sketch and then start using freeform afterwards. So you can kind of use the 3D sketch as a skeleton or a foundation or a base, if you may, for your uh, 3D model and then start pushing and pulling from that. So I'll be going over an example of just the, the regular 3D sketching and then how you can incorporate 3D sketching into your freeform environment as well. If you guys have any questions or comments uh, throughout this webinar or future topic recommendations, feel free to, at any time to leave it in the chat room or in the, uh, the comments section. And real quick, before we get into the demo, I do want to uh, make sure you guys are aware of the 50% off sale that's inside of uh, the website of Fusion 360 uh, until July 17th. So it's a promotion that's going on. If you guys, if your renewal is coming up for the subscription soon, definitely hop on this before July 17th. Uh, reach out to myself or someone at Kativ, and we're more than happy to extend your um, subscription. and and you can reach out to Autodesk directly, but if you reach out with us, it's the same price, but we, we, uh, we're another extension of your team or another helping hand uh, for you. So I, it's a good idea to reach out to us to, to get the, uh, the subscription there. So you can see some of the, the pricing on their website on the screen here. And I think I did hop over a page. Yes, I did. Uh, so here's some of the examples I'll be going into today. Uh, so the left one over there is, is a chair and you can see that the kind of the black part that goes around it uh, is made with a square frame um, and we'll be drawing that frame uh, <laughs> and that's something that 3D sketching really excels in. Um, we'll, we will be doing that bike example, the bike handlebar example uh, using the uh, 3D sketch in the freeform environment and then lastly incorporating and showing how we can make it for wiring. And yes, you, you can have done, um, you know, uh, like splines and, and like I mentioned, the move command with wiring as well. Um, but with 3D sketching, you can do that as you're sketching. You don't have to necessarily uh, draw a, a line, just like a straight 2D line first and then use the move command later. So we'll be going into that. And let me just do this real quick. 
All right, so Fusion 360, let's go ahead and get into that right here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my, my face because it's on the other screen here. All right, so first we'll be drawing that chair. Uh, so we'll be going into sketch. I'll go ahead and create a sketch. So I'll be doing a lot of just modeling today. Haven't done one of those in a while. Usually just have a discussions and things like that and show a little bit, but we'll be doing a lot more modeling today. As you noticed, I, when I went to create a sketch and I clicked on the plane I wanted to create it on, it actually didn't, it actually didn't make, uh, make me perpendicular to the face. And that's because prior to, I had this 3D sketched um, box checked and this is this is it right here guys 3d sketch uh if if you want to access the 3d sketch you want to make sure that box is checked but if it's checked and you you expect to move kind of like perpendicular to the sketch that the plane that you're working on it's not going to do that for you unless you uncheck that box and now if i create a a new sketch and i select that plane now it's it's thinking okay they're working in 2d we don't we we want to move perpendicular for them um but in this case we actually yeah we are moving we're working in 3d so it's a little flexible in the sense of just the little checkbox there and now we can just start drawing our line for that chair frame and we still have the same uh constraints that automatically come up come about kind of like that blue square you can see there in the middle um that allows me to snap to that point and then I can enter in values. Keep in mind, so if you don't know which plane you're working on, let me just hit escape there. If I click on that again, you can see this blue square is highlighted. That means in this red and green line, which is represented by X and Y, I'm drawing in the X and Y plane, of course. And you can also tell by this view cube what, uh, what those, the red and the green represents X and Y. Uh, if I click on this square right here, you can see the background changed a little bit, the grids, and now I'll be working with the Z and Y plane. Uh, and if I draw this line, I, it will be in the Z and Y plane. And you can kind of rotate and see how the, the background changes a little bit according to whatever plane I select. So what, right now we want to build on the X and Y plane. And I can go ahead and enter in my the value I want for that. Black means it's fully defined, so that's good to go. And I'll start just adding on to it. So everything is as expected, So which is good. You want to work with tools that are predictable. This is as if we're, we're working on a 2D sketch, because right now everything is on this 2D plane, and that's great, and we don't have to we can just use what we already know. So, so now I'm just entering in some values uh, for that chair. And then we're gonna get to the 3D part of it in just a moment here. All right, so everything so far has been on this 2D, 2D plane. And this is where it differentiates from before March of 2020 to after March of 2020. Uh, which is now when I want to draw, I want to draw the, give it some depth. I want to draw on the Z axis. So now we just click on that square there. Now we're working in the Y and Z plane. So every, anything I make here will be in the Y and Z plane. So I just, and I just made that line there and you can see that Hopefully you can see that it's uh, in a different uh, plane. And it looks like it is, um, it is not uh, fully constrained anymore. I think it's because this guy needs to be, there we go. That guy needs to be, uh, have, a, have a constraint. So I just gave it a vertical constraint, uh, which makes that, um, which that uh, fully defined as well. And then we can just keep adding on into the Z direction uh, here. So another 12. Again, just make sure you have the right um, planes checked. That one picked up the X and Y, so that's good. 
I'm just gonna draw an ambiguous line here. The neat thing about it is you can still use constraints. So for example, if I, I know that I want this to be pretty much symmetrical with whatever is on the right side of what I've already created. So what I can do here is just go to equal and select the two lines that I want to make equal. I, there we go. Now this line is even with this, this uh, first, the first 12 inch line that I made. All right. And then the other part about this, uh, it looks like I want to make it parallel with this line as well, uh, just so I can fully get it fully defined there. Again, I'm going to continue drawing. I'm just going to draw one ambiguously out in space like that so it's under underdefined. And then same thing, we'll do a parallel. So I want this to be parallel with that line. And we'll create an equal constraints. And there's multiple ways we can go about this. Um, there's more than one way you, um, that can be used to create the this line, of course, or this design entirely. Um, but I like it to be equal to this side. So then if I want to make a change, I just make a change to one side and it'll update the others. You can use parameters. If you guys remember what those are, those are kind of like variables uh, that you can use, be used to define your, your model, your sketch values. And then I'll draw an this one there, make this equal to that line. And lastly, connecting these two endpoints. Uh, I don't think there needs to be any definition there. Um, let's see if I can make one anyways. Oh yeah, it's over, it's over constrained. I think that one's already good to go. All right, so I have the skeleton of my chair that I wanted to make. And oops, just opened Excel there. Uh, let me just reference what I'm talking about here. This guy at the bottom, bottom left, I have a rough skeleton of it. Um, wanted to make something fresh and different for you guys. So, so this is my equivalent uh, of that. So let's go ahead and now we can use, what complements the, the 3D sketching tool is the pipe tool. It's kind of like a sweep, um, but it has predetermined um, sections here. You have circular, square, and triangular. So of course, this uh, chair is square. And we'll make it the section size of a half inch. And that's how you do it. That's It's kind of like a frame generator, if you will. Kind of like Inventor, Autodesk Inventor has frame generator. It's kind of like that, but it's I don't think it's quite there yet, but it's definitely a big jump from essentially not having it at all before. This helps a lot and tremendously. So all you need to do to edit this sketch is going into the sketch environment or, or editing the frame is going into the sketch environment here and editing your values uh, with those constraints that kind of uh, complement it. So that's the first example. I'm gonna show you guys two more examples. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, the second example is going to be the bike handle. And just to give you a refresher, it's gonna look something like that. It's not gonna look exactly like that, not even close, but I'm gonna, or I'm gonna try to get as close as I can within the next, what, five to 10 minutes for that example. So new design, create a sketch, and I'm going to start my bike handle. And this, this one's gonna differentiate because it's gonna be in the freeform environment. Um, so first I made my, I don't know what that part of the handlebar is called to be honest. Uh, and then I'm gonna make the elongated part still in the XY plane. Now we're going to hop over to the YZ plane. And I forgot the value I had for this. So let me just pull up my reference. Okay, I had it at five inches going that way. So 
So now that one was in the Y Z command or Z plane. And yeah, you, it's always good to rotate it around to check because sometimes you forget and it's actually going to be in the X Y plane and it's just going to not come out pretty. Um, so yeah, now I'm in the Y Z plane. Uh, now I'll go down about three. Still in the YZ plane. There we go. And the neat thing about 3D sketching is you can incorporate things, not only constraints, but you can incorporate things like fillets. And make sure you're using the 2D fillet, not the 3D fillet. If you hit F on your keyboard, that's the 3D fillet. So I'll go ahead and create the fillet here. And I did that in a multi, actually that would be just in the Y, X, Z plane, but it's still nice to be conveniently available to be used like that. It is removing some constraints because I'm creating a fillet on a corner like that, um, but that's intended. All right, so I'm kind of getting the shape of the bike handle there. Kind of like when you lean over on the bike and you just want to rest your hands down here, that's what that's for uh, down below there. And I don't want to incorporate this part just for this example. So I'm just going to right click and just make a construction geometry for those of you who are new to Fusion or aren't, aren't aware of that. So now this isn't actually a solid line as part of my um, geometry that I want to use. So now that I have the, I know it's not fully defined, best practice would be to fully define it. I just want to show the example I have moving forward here, uh, hopping into the freeform environment. And like I mentioned, there is the pipe command that complements 3D sketching. So I'll click on that. It has this window. Uh, it might be a little intimidating, but it's, it's not too bad. You click on that there, you are, you're wondering why is it all boxy? That's I don't want the box frame. You can just see the smooth display version of it. So in freeform environments, you, you have the option to hop between box display and smooth display. Box display helps you see any uh, unfluidity, if that's the word, uh, of, the, um, of the model. And smooth display gives you the actual uh, looks of it. And then the end type, it's gonna be, it's open right now. I can go ahead and close it off uh, by using that square type of end type there. So you can see this is the beginning, the foundation, the skeleton, if you will, of my bike handlebar. And, and uh, there, now we can start doing some freeform edits to it. So if you take a look at the handlebar, it has kind of this extrusion right here. It's not necessarily a perfect pipe. It has some uh, ripples for the grip here. So it's not necessarily a perfect pipe down there either. So that's where, you know, the free, free, free form modeling comes in. So first off, let me tackle uh, these guys down below here. I can just insert some more geometry to help me manipulate this. So I'll create uh, an edge there, right click, hold, release in at 12 o'clock. Create another one here. One more there. Nope, I didn't want there. And sure, why not? Uh, yeah, let's get one more. Okay, sorry, one more after that, <laughs> just to just to even it out. All right, so now I'm just gonna select some of these edges here. And I can manipulate it using some of my known freeform modeling techniques. Maybe something like that. Give it a little bit more of a grip. Maybe exaggerate some of these more. 
again, the more, the more time you spend with free form bodies, the, the, the better, hopefully the better it'll look at the end. It takes a lot of practice to really get it to what you want. Like that it could look, look, definitely look better. Maybe I added too many edges over there. Um, so I can try to try to get to that, that ripple effect that I had over there. Uh, and then the other one is fixing this guy over here, starting to elaborate on the details of it over here. Uh, we can use tools kind of like the insert edge again. Ah, oh, darn, lost it. So yeah, this is all stemming from that 3D sketch that we made. Um, and then I can select this series of edges and I can crease them. And then after that, I can do a little, give it a little pull. Not too much, just a little subtle pull to try to give it that, that more ergonomic look uh, to this bike handle. So the more you start playing with it, the more it'll start to, to look like it did in the picture. And lastly, we can do something like duplicating it to be parallel to the other side and then maybe fixing some of the uh, overlapping geometry over here. I have to do one at a time. Doesn't like it when I delete everything at the same time here per se. So yeah, we have uh, other freeform, if you wanna get more into freeform modeling, we have other webinars that we've done in the past on it. Uh, it's definitely fun, but definitely challenging as well um, to, to work with freeform bodies like this. So this green line represents the, the kind of the mirror between uh, the, the, the two sides. So if I ended up changing one side, it'll, it'll change the other side, kind of like that. So yeah, this will start to get us on our way to, to getting the, the bike handlebar. So I wanted to show you that for you guys, um, starting from the 3D sketch. And lastly, there is the wiring that I wanted to show. And we'll start off inside of a enclosure, um, not, not showing the, the electronics cooling today, that's gonna be next month, but, but I do wanna show how to create a wire. And you, some of you might have already created a wire with splines in a 2D sketch, but if you haven't done it uh, recently, we can do it with a 3D sketch. So the goal here is to get from this gray piece over to that gray piece where there's this interference in the middle of it. So we want to show, I want to show just how 3D sketching can help to get around that a little bit easier. So I'll go ahead and start creating my sketch here. And it doesn't matter really what plane we start off with because we're, we have 3D sketch checked. And I'll start creating the, the skeleton uh, for my wiring. It does kind of like highlight the bottom, which I don't like as much here, but I am still able to select the planes that I was, I did in the first example. And now we can, and now we can start drawing our lines here. So let's see, we can make this about 12, looks like we're in millimeters right now. So I just created a line in the X, Y, or the X, Z plane looks like. Uh, going that way. Now we're going to make this wire hop over this little obstacle. So yes, we are still in the one 2D plane, but we're going to eventually have to move to a different plane in just a moment. Oh, so so there that, there's an example of a, <laughs> I thought I was going straight upwards, but I actually went in the, the wrong direction. I hit control Z to undo that and try that again. So I want to click that blue box there so I know I'm going to be drawing on the, the plane I wanted to draw on originally. Oh man, I did it again. Am I missing something here?
All right, let's try that one more time. Sorry if I'm uh, getting you guys dizzy. I know uh, <laughs> people watching are, are, wouldn't be as, okay, there we go. I had to go 180 degrees upwards. Maybe it'll be nicer if I had a 3D mouse too. Um, maybe, maybe I'll start learning that in the future. Then I'll start going across here. So yeah, we're still in the same plane, which is fine. We don't have to be hopping to different planes. I think I keep doing the wrong degree. So that's what I, that's what I need to stop doing. I'll just go to this angle here. Okay, 90 degrees, enter. Okay, there we go, we're on our way. Making it over this, this little hill here. Then we'll just go down another three. It's really important to get the degrees. All right. And now we're gonna make our way into the third dimension without having to get out of the sketch or anything like that. It's all part of the same sketch, which is, which is the beauty of it. And this line, I have no idea how long it's gonna be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw a very long line going way past what I, I think it will be. Because what I like to use a lot, especially in AutoCAD, is the trim and extend commands. Um, so now I'm gonna start my sketch from over here. I want to draw on that box. Let me select that box. Okay, there we go. And then this line, I'm gonna to have to get the angle right, so 90. But this line's gonna go far past it as well. So now I have two lines going past each other, but now I'm just gonna hit T on my keyboard and just trim them off. And now they are connected and I didn't have to think there. <laughs> uh, so now that I have that set up, we can do our fillets and call it a day here. Just going around. Creating some fillets. Yeah, there, I can worry about the, uh, fully defining it later, but that's the whole idea of 3D sketching all in one go. I know there was a little bit of a of a overlap there, but I mean, we, we, got, we got what we wanted to get here. So now lastly, we just need to create a pipe or use the pipe command and not 12 millimeters. We'll just put in one millimeter and not square, but circular. And you know that can represent something like the wiring uh, for you guys. Uh, but just wanted to show an example of how the electrical wiring can benefit from it. What you might have done before is create, get to this point here, and then you would have to use some spline, some sketching, and do some move commands to get to there. Um, but now you can do it all in one go and probably save you about 30, 40% time uh, creating that 3D sketch there. All right. Again, just a reminder for the Fusion 360 50% off sale that ends July 17th. Reach out to me or my colleagues uh, on that. And yeah, let me take a look if there's any questions here from you guys. Um, there's my email address and there's the company number. You can always ask for me if they're calling through that number, but more than happy to, to talk about 3D sketching. Um, if you guys want to see topics like this in the future or if you have any questions in regards to your own workflow and how you want to incorporate not only 3d sketching but any other of the the features and functionalities inside fusion 360 always more than welcome to to reach out to me don't hesitate to to do so i love talking about fusion 360 all right i'll give another 20 seconds here uh, again next week or next month is going to be on electronics cooling inside of Fusion uh, and that's in preview mode. So if you have an electronical uh, component like 
or uh, encasing that I showed you here today. Uh, if you want to see the airflow inside of that, definitely worth checking out the one for next month. And if you haven't already, we have our Thursday weekly webinars, and that one is on a lot of topics uh, in the collection, in the product design and manufacturing collection, um, on Inventor, Vault, AutoCAD, uh, Cam, Ansys is starting is have their own uh, webinars as well. So if you do um, more in depth simulation, that's definitely a good webinar to check out. All right. So I don't see any anything else coming in. So I appreciate you guys hopping on. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And if I don't talk to you before next weekend, have a happy and safe Fourth of July. Take care, everyone.